Okay, Houston, right, we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Houston. No problems today, because today we want to talk about the ocean, the living things in the ocean. There's so many living things in the ocean, and we've probably been fascinated by it. I've got this dream that someday I would swim with the dolphins. I need to do that. I really do. Uh, so let's talk about the way that scientists categorize the life in the ocean. There's three big categories. We've got plankton, nexton, and benthos. Now, plankton means literally, literally the floaters. Nexton means the swimmers. And this means bottom. Think about it for a moment. There are some living things in the ocean that just float. And then there's ones that can swim on their own, the nexton. Uh, these are what you're familiar with most of. And the benthos are the things that live on the bottom. But let's talk about the ones that live, uh, if you will, that are the floaters. There's really two categories. There's what we call phytoplankton and then zooplankton. Now, these are small, sometimes one cellular creatures. Okay, think back to biology class and amoebas and things like that. And one category gets their energy, phytoplankton, from the process of Photosynthesis. And these are the plants of the ocean, if you will. Now, most of them just float around. And you could have seaweed. Those are different kinds of things that also do get energy from photosynthesis. But the vast majority of these little small, small, crazy small creatures called phytoplankton. And they get their energy from the sun, and then they grow and reproduce and do things like, you know, animals and like trees, not animals, trees and things like that. Now, zoo comes from like, like the zoo. You've heard the zoo, right? The zoo, this means animals. So they're small creatures who eat the phytoplankton. All right. Uh, but they're also, they just float around. And then when they run across a phytoplankton, they eat it. And that's how they get their energy. But ultimately, where are they getting their energy from? Everybody gets their energy from the sun. The sun gets that energy. The next one, of course, is the swimmers. These are all the ones that can swim independently. This would be uh, dolphins, fish, uh, uh, whales, uh, I think you get the idea, but also called jellyfish, things like that. But what the key they also, they usually, uh, one of the keys is they can only have a specific range. Most of these creatures can only live in a certain area. Usually there's a, a temperature variation uh, that they can live in. They don't uh, travel all over the world. There are some exceptions, of course. You can see migration of whales and some of the larger mammals and things like that. Uh, you find most of them near the coastline, which is true here too, by the way. Mo most of the living things, they live close to the coast. They don't live over the deep ocean because the deep ocean doesn't have the nutrients that's required. Uh, the nutrients as it comes, comes from the bottom of the ocean. Um, but the problem is the bottom of the ocean needs to move to the top of the ocean to bring the nutrients. So you need something for there to be a, like a mixing for that to case. So the creatures at the bottom of the ocean are called the benthos and you do find them in shallow water. And what do they eat? Basically the bottom, what bottom dwellers eat is they eat everything here that falls. So when a whale dies, he's going to sink to the bottom of the ocean. And that's a lot of nutrients for the bottom dwellers to eat. Okay, so the bottom dwellers eat the stuff when these things die, which as it turns out makes the bottom of the ocean very nutrient rich because that's where all the good stuff is. You know, when a, when a tree falls and it degrades in the, in, in the forest, all the tree gets that, that makes the soil good for something else to grow. But since there's no light getting down to the deep ocean, nothing can grow at the bottom of the ocean. So what you need is you need it to rise up the nutrients somehow to get to the top so that the phytoplankton, the zooplankton can eat it. So when we think about marine life, we talk about marine, marine life zones. And we actually have different categories, if you will, on how we categorize it. So you're gonna see some overlap in these things. We can categorize it based on the sun, sunlight, right? We can also categorize it based on the distance from shore, or we can categorize it by depth. So there's three ways that we look at the marine life zone. So the, in the sunlight category, we talk about three levels, photic, euphotic, and aphotic. So some parts of the ocean are photic. That means lots of light. All right, so that's the surface of the ocean. Euphotic is enough light 
enough light for photosynthesis. This is the dim part of the ocean. In the aphotic is no light. So if we want to look at it from the, the oceans, from the perspective of light, um, we've got full light, if you will, some light and no light. And some creatures live in different parts of the ocean. The next one, right, so that's sort of boom, one category. The next thing I want to look at is distance from the shore. And that has three categories. So intertidal, this is a very narrow strip. Uh, it's a very narrow strip just along the coast. What you find here is a rich biodiversity. This is where you go to the beach and you can see all kinds of very different animals. The neuritic, this is above the continental shelf. Now these is still rich biodiversity. Because it's shallower water, and above that shallower water, there's a lot of chance for those nutrients we talked about earlier to, to feed the creatures. In oceanic, this is the open ocean. And not much life out there. So you can see that we can look at it from the perspective of sunlight, or the distance from the shore, or the depth. And there are three regions for the depth. We'll find some space for this. The pelagic, these are the ones that uh, swim, float um, above bottom. Again, we've really talked about this. This is the bottom feeders. And the abyssal, this is in the deep, deep, deep ocean. You find in like the trenches, the abyssal, like the abyss, right? And the very, very few creatures. And the pressure is high. But there are a few creatures that get their energy from something called chemiosynthesis. Now this is actually a fascinating thing. We didn't think there was living things down at the deepest part of the ocean, but because of the volcanic vents, there's energy coming from the volcanic vents, and there is a certain creature that's adapted to get their energy, not from the sun, but actually from the energy coming from the inner parts of the earth. So it's a very fascinating thing, these things that we call chemiosynthesis. So uh, big ideas, sunlight, is one way to look at it from distance from shore or the depth. Houston, we don't have a problem. We'll see you in class.